Actually, because it's so fun and easy, let's go ahead and just throw a quick painter pass on here. The first thing I'm going to do is start with the smart materials down here. And if I scroll down, let's grab this steel dark age. I'm going to drag it over here into my layers area. And this is going to be kind of our base material. If you open up this folder, you're going to see here's the metal with a finish filter applied to it. Here's the metal properties if you want to change any of those. I'm not going to go super heavy into what Substance Painter is or what it does. Again, if you want to know more on that, go to my YouTube channel, go to my playlist, uh, scroll down here to the Substance Painter's Quick Start or up here in the live stream episodes or live stream highlights. And we go, we delve a little deeper into painter functionality. Let's go over here to Steel Gun Painted. I'm going to drag that right above Steel Dark Aged. And let's go ahead and put Steel Gun Painted in other areas. So I'm going to right click here and we're going to go to ask, add mask with color selection. We can go ahead and pick our color. Let's go ahead and make this red area steel gun painted. So we have steel gun painted, steel gun aged. Let's go ahead and put a rubber grip on here. I'm going to do a search under all for rubber. We have a plastic rubber, rubber dry, rubber tire, and rubber tire dirty. I'm going to take this rubber dry and just drag it right above steel gun painted. Again, right click Add mask of color selection, pick color, and we'll just apply it to those areas right there. Now I do have some areas in here where I could have some emissive. I think I have these painted as what could be an emissive color. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new fill layer right here. We'll go ahead and call this emissive. And this is just a material. So if I want to, I can make this red. I can make it either metallic, which is not right now. It's dielectric, or we could dial that all up the way to the metallic. So you can make it a metallic red if you'd want to. Uh, you can make it super shiny with the roughness setting, or you can make it super matte, but really what I'm looking for in this case is just to have areas on this that have like LED lighting or an emissive light that I can add to my object. So what I'm going to do is need to add an emissive channel. So under here, under the texture set settings, we're going to go to channels plus. We're going to add an emissive channel. So now you're going to see when I do that, I have another option over here called emissive. So if I turn that on, this material is now going to be emissive. Of course, the emissive color is black, so it's not going to show up emissive. But if I change this to red, now it will be a self-illuminated red emissive object. In order to see that a little bit better, let's go to the viewer settings here. And we're going to turn on shadows. And let's do uh, intensive computation. If I hold down shift and move this around, you're going to see my object isn't really casting any shadows right now. If I go over here, right click the emissive and add a black mask, what that's going to do is get rid of my, it's not going to get rid of my emissive, but it's going to make my emissive show up nowhere because it is completely masked out by a black mask. So now if I move this around, you're going to see I have shadows on my object. And if I want to put this red emissive in certain areas, what I can do is I can paint it. So if I just start painting on my object with a white color, and you're going to see in my brush options here, we're painting with white. We can also paint with black if we want to, or gray, but right now we're painting with white, and it's going ahead and uh, painting an emissive color in here. So if I put the shadows on the other side, you're going to say that's you're going to see that still stays lit up. If you want to harden your brush, you can go over here to your, in the case of this brush, the alpha shape settings, and you're going to see there's a hardness slider over here. You can also, if you hold down control, you're going to see a whole bunch of control settings over there. What you can do is hold down control and then right click and drag up. That'll change your hardness. And if you control, hold down control and go left and right, that'll, contra that'll change your brush size. So I'm going to go ahead and go hold down control and go up. And then I'll make this very, very uh, sharp on the edges. And now I can go through here and I can, for instance, just stamp and paint and make this smaller. If I want to make these little buttons over here, these little LEDs right here, I can just stamp those on there. And if I want to do it on both sides, what I can do is go up here to where it says symmetry. Go ahead and turn that on. And now we have an X symmetry plane. If your object was symmetrical in the Z or the Y, you can change that here. And if you want to go ahead and hide the symmetry plane but still have symmetry turned on, you can go ahead and do this little drop down here and hit hide symmetry plane. So now when I start, uh, let's for instance say I want to mark these things as LED lights, I can go through here and I can just kind of paint those on there. If you want to paint a, and it's going to go on both sides, if you want to paint in a straight line, what you can do is hold out shift and that'll snap it to the side. And if you want to paint orthographically, go up here to the camera and change it from a perspective view down to an orthographic view. Now what you can do is go ahead and make your brush size the size that you want to fit in when within these channels here and then click once hold down shift and now when you click again it'll go ahead and just fill up those pa those spaces uh, perfectly there now what would i have on my material id is if i right click my emissive and i want to go ahead and just clear this mask or refill it with a black what i can do is hold down or just right click this black mask and go add black mask again it'll add a new black mask and now what i can do is go again add mask with color selection pick color then you're going to see i already have a purple assigned to those emissive channels oops let's undo that let's go ahead and pick a color there we go now if you did pick one that you didn't want to like say you wanted these 
light blue area is also be a missive and you look at it and you're like you know what that's a little too much go down here to this light blue that you picked hit the minus sign and i'll go ahead and get rid of that emissive channel there now you're going to see I have an emissive with a color selection and I'm assigned it all purple, but let's say I did want these things to be emissive as well. All I would need to do to make this non-destructive is right click, add a paint, and now I have a paint layer above that. And then again, I can just go through here, click once, hold down shift, and just go ahead and fill these channels with that emissive color. And if I hold down shift and move this around, you're going to see, there we go. Now you're also going to see this this down here this little magazine down here apparently i accidentally had the purple assigned not a big deal with that paint selected i can go over here to the polygon fill select that one choose a black color and because this whole piece down here is a separate object i can choose this mesh fill and i can go ahead and just with this selection here and black selected i can touch that mesh and it'll go ahead and fill that with black so now if i hit one if you hover over these, you're going to see the hotkey. Well, you're not going to see the hotkey, but the hotkey for paint is one. Just hit one to go back into paint. And then two, three, four is to go back into mesh selection. So if you hit one again, you go back to paint selection. And now you can just modify those masks on the fly. If you want to see where those masks are, just hold down Alt and click the emissive channel. Then you're going to see that's where the white shows up in your object here. And then hit M to go back to your material view. Uh, speaking of channels, if you want to see what your channels are up to, you can hit the C key and that'll cycle through your channels. You can also go in here to your viewer settings and choose you know, what you're viewing here. So this is your mask here. This is what your base color is going to look like when you export it. Your metallic map, your roughness map, normal, height, and emissive. Go ahead and hit M and that'll put you back in the material mode. And let's add one more material here. Um, you can go, instead of doing a smart material, you can just go down here to materials. And these will be basically fancy fill layers. These are going to be fill layers that have a lot of material settings and a lot of adjustments that you can make. So what I'm looking for is like a shiny metal. Let's go to this iron pure. I'm just going to drag this above. Uh, you don't, you know, I can drag it above my emissive. If I don't want it to be on top of my emissive, I can just drag it underneath the emissive. Not a big deal. And if I want to assign this iron pure to just specific areas, again, I can either add a black mask and then paint where I want it to go or use this mesh selection and then fill, say, with a white any of these objects in here that are all separate. Or I can go over here again, we'll do add a black mask just to clear that out. Like I've mentioned before, we can just right click this, do add mask with color selection, go to pick color, and I'll do this light blue. Let's go ahead and change our camera back to orthographic view here. I'm sorry, back to perspective view. And it looks a little clean, so let's go ahead and add some dirt. One way to do that is you can go down here and you can choose a dirt material or a dude smart dirt smart material. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a simple dirt. I'm going to click a new fill layer. We'll go ahead and double click this and say label it dirt here. Um, dirt generally speaking is kind of maybe kind of a brownish color here. Um, it's not going to be metallic. It's going to be pretty dull. It's not going to be super shiny unless it's muddy. So I'm going to go ahead and make this pretty rough. You can add height if you have very bumpy dirt. I'm just going to keep it kind of subtle. So let's say this is the dirt I like. I'm going to right click this dirt. And there's a couple different ways you can do this too. Um, if you add a black mask, that's going to make the dirt not show up anywhere, of course, unless you want to, you know, paint your dirt on. Another thing you do is you can go over to Smart Material. Or I'm sorry, Smart Masks. And you can see we have some dirt, dirt complex, dirt dry. These are basically masks that are already set up for you. So if you do, for example, dirt dry, we can just drag that on top of our dirt. And now we have a mask editor giving our object dry dirt. You can click on that MG mask editor here, and you can turn down the global balance of that dirt and just dial it in a little bit. If you want to change it, let's say dirt complex. I'm going to drag dirt complex over here. I want to go ahead and kill the other one that we made. And now we have dirt complex. We can go ahead and choose that. And we can dial in these settings however we want. An alternative to this, if you go ahead and click this little X right there, we can right click this dirt, go down here to add generator. And then under this generator, I'm going to do MG dirt. What that's going to do is apply a mask where this dirt's going to go. And this MG, this generator, is controlling how that mask is being generated. Again, if you want to see the mask on your object, hold down Alt and click that layer. And now you can see all these white areas is where that dirt's going to go. So if you click MG Dirt here, you can say the dirt level. It's pretty high right now, so there's really a lot of dirt going in there. As we drop that dirt level down, you're going to see it's going to start collecting in the AO and in the cavity or in the curvature of our object here. So you're going to see this MG Dirt Generator is taking this ambient occlusion texture and this curvature texture and dictating where this dirt level is. You're going to see another one over here, Ground Dirt, and that would take something like your position map and allow you to kind of make your dirt appear on the object from lower or in the Y position. The lower part of your object would be dirtier and then the top part of your object would be not quite as dirty. So you can use all of these maps to kind of dictate where that dirt's going to end up. If you want more information on that, again, 
go to my YouTube channel here and I walk you through the Substance Designer Quick Start, which is a good way to see the node construction of how to use those maps to your advantage to kind of dictate where certain aspects of the material are going to end up. And of course, this view is pretty cool if you want to see where the dirt's going to go, but if you want to see the dirt dialed in all at once, hit the M key and you're going to see, okay, now I can see where that dirt is ending up and you can change the dirt level. You can change the grunge amounts. This is grunge dirt that's coming in and then the dirt level looks like it's coming in from the AO and the cavity map. Um, right now, if we crank that dirt level way up, you're going to see it's a pretty uniform dirt. So let's say we want to have this dirt kind of get with a mottled kind of color to it. So I'm going to click this fill layer here and you can see the base color right here is dictating what color that dirt is. So you can always go back to these fill layers and change these materials on the fly if you don't like the look that you're getting. Another cool thing is, for example, the emissive. If I go back to this emissive, I can change this to like maybe a cool blue or maybe an orange emissive instead of a red one. Uh, but to go back down to our dirt here, you're going to see our base color is just a uniform brown. Let's go ahead and break that up a little bit. I'm going to go over here to my procedurals. And even within the procedurals, you're going to see we have some dirt procedurals in here. Basically, this is, these are just procedural generated maps that are automatically tiling that you can apply to almost anything in Substance Designer. So what I can do here is this black and white spots. I'm going to drag that over our base color. And now our base color is black and white spots. So you might be thinking, well, I don't want black and white dirt. This is just going to allow us to break up that the different shades of brown that we're going to have on our object. If you want to change this map, you can change the histogram position and make more black or more white depending on where you dial this in. You can invert that if you'd like. You can change the contrast of the histogram here. You can change the disorder. So there's a lot of different options for you. Now, in order for us to kind of model the look of this thing, what we can do is we can go, I want the black to be one color and the white to be another color. How we're going to do that is right click this fill layer here. We're going to go to add filter and in this filter we only want this filter to affect the color of this fill layer so i'm going to turn off everything except for color here and then for this filter we're going to do a gradient so now you're going to see right now we have a gradient color quantity we have three plugged in so let's we'll stick with three uh, apparently you can grab even more shades of gray in here and apply it to your object. But right now we have black, white, and then gray. So 100% black, 100% white, and then 50% gray That's gonna that you can assign three different colors to. So what you can do is under the color that says black here, go ahead and click that one. And we're gonna change this one to a brown. Let's say a dark brown. And then for this dark gray here, let's dial one in and let's make it a little more orange and maybe a little lighter. And then for this color three, Again, we'll just dial in sort of a brown. We'll make it a little more saturated. So now you can see we have some of the kind of dark dirt, light dark dirt, light dirt, and now kind of a reddish kind of clay dirt all mixed into one fill layer here for the base color. It's still pretty rough. We didn't apply this to our roughness or anything. So we go through our channels again, just hit C. You can see that's our mask. Here's our base color metallic. Here's our roughness. So we hit the M key. There we are back to our dirt here. So now if again, if we want this dirt to only show up in certain areas, we go back to this MG dirt here. And right now the level is very high. So let's go ahead and back that down. And now as the dirt comes in, you're going to see it's got little splotches of red in there and a little bit of a darker brown. It just gives a little bit more of an organic feel. Uh, just really quickly, if I crank that dirt all the way back up again, you're also going to see if I click this fill layer here, I can go over to UV scale and I can crank this up and make it higher and higher and higher. So you can see as I go to, you know, tiling this material more and more, you're going to start seeing repeating patterns of that dirt. So you can dial this in to get a little bit more resolution in your dirt if you'd like. And you can also change the projection here. The UV projection seems to be doing fine from the mesh we got from Instalod. But if you need to, go down here to triplanar projection, and that'll go ahead. And if you have any seam uh, issues in here, it'll take care of that. But this one seems to be fine here. I'm going to go back to this dirt mask and we're just going to dial back that dirt level again and now we just got a little bit of dirt populating our gun here if you want you can add a little bit of gun oil as where as well so i'm going to take this dirt fill layer i'm, I'm just going to click the new fill layer here we'll call this one oil and we only want this to affect the roughness of our objects i'm going to right click this well before i right click this i'm going to take this one and i'm going to turn off all these different channels except for roughness i'm going to make it very shiny so you're going to see now I have a very shiny weapon. Maybe not necessarily exactly what I want, but I'm just going to dial this in in very specific areas. So I'm going to right click this, go add to black mask. And again, like I did before, I can hold that control and right click and make this brush size bigger or smaller. And if I control right click down, I can make that hardness lighter, go down to a very soft, very soft amount. You can also go over here to where it says flow and you can drag that flow down. So as you're painting with this one, it won't be quite as harsh. It won't apply it all at once. You can kind of just dial it in very subtly. And you can also go over here to the flow and click this one here. Is right now there's no pin pressure. You can add pin pressure to this and control even more exactly how much oil you want. So as I'm 
painting this on here, you're going to see the surface appears to get a little more oily. And if you go through your channels here, so here's the roughness. As I'm painting this on, the roughness is getting darker. So if I hit M, now you can see that oil is coming right in there. So I'm going to go ahead and undo those last two here. And basically you would put this oil where you would have parts of your weapons that would be oiled. So right around here on these screws. And we still have our plane turned on. So you can go ahead and add a little bit of oil here. If you want to give an overall roughness breakup, and I wouldn't necessarily do this uh, for every object, but just to kind of demonstrate this as well, uh, do another fill layer here. And again, instead of instead of uh, giving this a mask, what we're going to do is turn off everything but the roughness. Go over here to our procedurals, and you're going to see there's a lot of grunges in here. I'm going to take this grunge 11, drop it right onto my roughness here, and you're going to see that's going to give my weapon a very grungy roughness breakup. I can, again, I can change that UV scale to dial it up or down. And I can also go to up here, so see where it says base color? This is allowing us to control the opacity of all these base colors that we have on here. So for example, if I go back to MG Dirt, crank that dirt level up, you can see it's very dirty. However, for the base color, I can go back here to normal and where it says normal, and this is just the blend mode, just like in Photoshop. I can take this and I can dial back down the amount of base color that's gonna show up because I have base color selected. But on this one, we'll call this roughness breakup. If I select this one, go down here to roughness, and I'm sorry, let's go back here down here to dirt, and we'll drop that dirt level back down, and then go back up here to roughness. So we've gone from base color to the roughness drop down. Now when I do this roughness 100%, we can drop down just the roughness channel, and you can dial this in just a little bit. Um, if you don't like this substance grunge, you can take another grunge here and just drop it in, or if it won't let you, just go ahead and exit out of that one, and then drag another grunge right onto that roughness, and it looks like you'll have to go ahead and turn off the other channels again. And now when you dial this one up, you get a different type of grunge here. And like I said before, if you don't want to do UV projection, you could do triplanar projection, and that'll go ahead and dial that in for you. And then again, just drop that roughness down. And now you can just do a little bit of breakup on your entire surface if you want. If you want to stamp some text on here, what you can do is you can make a new fill layer. And on this fill layer, we're not going to be painting any text. We're just going to be stamping in height of a text here. So what we're going to do is take this fill layer and we're going to turn off everything but height. Now, if we're going to stamp into our object, I'm going to take this height and drag it down this way. And that's going to allow us to embed height information or punch it into our object. If I right click this fill layer here, let's go ahead and call this text stamp. And we're going to right click this one, add a black mask. And now if we go back to our brush here, Let's crank our flow all the way back up again. Control right click up to make it a very harsh outline. And now when I just drag, you're gonna see we're cutting into our object. If I hit X on the uh, keyboard, that's gonna make our mask black and that's gonna go ahead and mask back out. So you can see we can paint in and paint out height. If we wanna adjust the actual height that is creating on our object, what we can do is go back to the fill layer here and this height value we can change to make it a little more subtle or very contrasty, or we can even go ahead and change it so it's punching out. So we can go in, out, just a little bit more subtle. And that's all just based on the fill layer properties and also this text stamp here, uh, where the mask goes. If I hold down Alt and click that, you're gonna see exactly where that mask is gonna end up. Let's go ahead and hit M. And we're gonna right click here and go to add a black mask just to give us a new mask. So if we wanna do text, what we can do is let's go ahead and make sure we're back in orthographic view so we can hold down Shift and snap that directly to the side here. And let's go down here to the alphas area. And if you scroll down, you're going to see a whole bunch of different alphas. So these alphas are kind of cool. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you can use these. Uh, for example, if you want, you can drag any one of these shapes out here and just replace your alpha with that shape. So now when you go through here with your stamp here, you can just go through here and you can stamp these alphas. Again, go back to your fill layer properties and make these pump out, punch out or punch in or punch in a little more subtly or out a little more subtly. And you can also go through here if you take this alpha right here and do add a filter. You can take this filter and, for example, do a blur filter. And now you can actually blur out that alpha, make it a little softer, all completely non-destructive. You don't like that? Just exit out and then you're back where you started. Also, you're going to see I have the alpha on here. If you hold down, if you hold down control again and then you use your left mouse button, you can move this alpha around. Let's go ahead and grab a little bit more of an obvious one here. We'll take this cross blocky and go into alpha. There's also some options in here. You can invert the cross here so you can stamp Let's go ahead and undo these last two here. You can go ahead and stamp like so, or you can go back to invert, and now you can stamp like this. And some of these alphas have more options than others. For example, uh, this arrow simple multiple right here, you can go through here and you can change the width of them. So you can see the alpha is changing right here. So if you want really fat arrows, you can go ahead and change the width on there. 
Um, you can change the quantity. So if you want a lot of arrows, you can plug that in. And if you want to make this bigger, hold down control and then right click, and that'll make the alpha bigger. And then control and left click will allow you to turn or rotate this around. And I kind of wish Photoshop had that built in, rotating the alpha there. So now you can just go ahead and stamp these. Or if you want to rotate it this way, just go over here and scale it down and click again. But like we were saying before, we want to do text. So let's scroll down here. And here's a whole bunch of different fonts in here. So if we just kind of hover over these, you're going to see these are the different fonts that we have available to us. Let's go ahead and grab this substance right here. Just drag it right onto our alpha. And now when we control and click, we can just we can just stamp in substance. Now, if you want to change this text, of course, all you got to do is go into this text here. You can go ahead and type in, for example, Pav Mike Livestream. We'll go ahead and stamp that on there. Uh, you can also go in here and change the size of the uh, text if you want to. We'll go ahead and keep that however big it was. Alignment is set to center over here. If you want to left justify this, you go ahead and do left. And then we can do position X and kind of scooch it on over a little bit. And now it'll fit within our circle here. So now we can go over here, stamp pav mic live stream. Now again, if this is punching in too much, we can go over here to our layer properties and we can dial in uh, just a little bit less height. Or if we wanted to bump out, just drag that height over to the other side and we can go ahead and change that. So let's go ahead and stamp that right here on the barrel. There we go. Good enough. And I'm going to make that a little less obvious here. We'll just drag that down. There we go. Just nice and lightly stamped on here. Now let's say you want to paint some decal stuff on here. So the decals I'm going to put underneath the dirt. I'm going to click Iron Pure, click a new fill layer, and we'll call this Decal Paint. I'll go ahead and leave it white. Right click here, add a black mask. Let's go over here to our brushes. I'm gonna, re I'm gonna choose default hard. And now I can go through here and just paint where I want my decals to go. Um, if you want to, you can hit Control G. That'll make a new group folder. We can name this decals all. And if you want to just put this on one certain area, you can right click this, add mask with color selection, pick your color and choose that color. Or alternatively, you could just go over here to the object selection option, go ahead and make that white with the mesh fill and then just choose the mesh you want to constrain it to. And that'll go ahead and fill that in. If you hold down Alt and click, you'll see this entire mesh right here is all one piece. So we'll go back over here to paint mode, hit M. And now our decals will be just confined to this one area. So if we go back down here to decal paint. We see our white paint layer is already uh, filled with a black mask here. I'm going to change this roughness over here to a base color. And for the decal paint, if you just start painting, you're going to see this is where we're going to be painting uh, our decal on. And again, if you want to just do a design, you can go over here to alphas. You can choose like square stripes, drag that into your grayscale, and you can just go ahead and stamp that on there. But for now, what I'm going to do is just go into here to brushes, click default hard, and I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that grayscale there. The alpha is where I actually wanted to put that, by the way. So on the brush default hard here, if we go back to alphas and then say put these stripes in here, don't put it in the grayscale, put it in the alpha. And now you could go ahead and just stamp some stripes on here. If you want to do these manually or do a little bit more of a custom placement, let's go back here to brushes, choose default hard. I'm going to go into alpha and choose this uh, sh circle shape again. So now I can control the hardness, hardness level here. And I'm going to change this grayscale back to just painting with white. So now we're just going to be painting, painting our decal on here manually. And if I want to, I can just tap once on my object, hold down shift and then tap again. And that will just paint a straight line across here. And I can hold down control and make a smaller line here above it. And because we have our symmetry line still on, on. If I go over here to the other side, it's going to be painting on the other side as well. If I want to clean this up, I can hit X and then we can go over here and we can just erase. We're not really erasing, we're painting black, but it'll look like we're erasing where this white line goes. Another thing you can do is with, you know, while you're painting in black, what you can do is change it to a dirt brush and then you could manually go in here and or, or go down here to like maybe scratches and you can start dialing in some of these scratches here, kind of make it like you're scratching this white down to another surface. Uh, but I tend to use like to use generators instead. So what I'll do is with this decal paint, I have a mask here. I'm going to right click this mask. And again, we're going to go down here to add generator. And we're going to choose this MG metallic. What that's going to do is we still got our decal paint uh, layer on here. But what the MG metal edgeware is doing is basically if we hold down alt, you're going to see this is where it's allowing that other our uh, paint layer here to show up. So what I want to do over here, I'm going to hit M to go back into material mode, is with MG Metal Edgeware selected, I'm going to go to Invert On, and that's going to allow the paint to show up everywhere except for the edges. So it kind of looks like the whole thing's painted, except in the edges, it gets a little bit worn here. However, I had already painted a little bit of that decal paint. So what I'm going to do is change this from a normal to a multiply. And now you're going to see wherever I paint, it's going to automatically wear where this MG Generator Metal Edgeware goes. And now I can, as I'm painting on this decal paint here, 
And let's go ahead and go back to my default hard brush and hit X. So now as I'm painting, anywhere it gets towards the edge, it'll go ahead and auto wear this paint for me. In fact, I can go down here to this metal edge wear here and I can change that wear level and really crank it up. And I go back to my decal paint and you're gonna see no matter what, it's going to paint or it's going to scratch up and wear my painting that I'm laying down automatically. You can also go in here, we're in the base color now. We can take this, we can just dial back a little bit of that potency of that decal paint that we're applying on there. Now let's say instead of an alpha or a built-in texture or a procedural, you want to bring in your own texture and say paint a warning label on here. Actually, one more thing I want to talk about is if we go over here to the decal, I forgot, um, under the decal paint, you can change this to, um, we've got a white uniform color. If you want to make that paint shiny, just dial in that roughness here. If you want to make it matte, you can make it very matte as well. And you can also add a little bit of height. So this paint if you want to give it a little bit of height, you can dial in just a tiny bit of height here and kind of make it look like it's embossed on there. Uh, I prefer this, this height. This paint is so thin. I'm just going to go ahead and keep that at zero, but that is an option available to you if you'd like. Now back to that warning label. Uh, what we can do is I'm going to go to my computer, the paint, uh, painter installed uh, stuff. I'm going to throw this warning right here into our shelf down here, and I'm going to tell it you are a texture and I want to import your resources to this current project which we've saved as pistol installed. Go ahead and import and now when we go over here to our textures we have a warning sign on a uh, warning label on here. You can if you want to stamp this on your object is again go ahead down here below dirt. I'm going to add instead of adding a fill layer I'm going to add a normal layer and with this normal layer you're going to see it's basically tied into your brush so you can paint a red metallic shiny material wherever you paint this here. Uh, but instead of doing that, what I'm going to do is turn off everything but color and we'll call this warning label. And instead of dragging this warning label onto my base color and using this to stamp, what I'm going to do is use, let's go ahead and get rid of that. What I'm going to do is up here, you're going to see we have paint, eraser, and projection. And that's also one, two, and three. So you can either hit the three key or touch projection. And I'm going to turn off everything except for the color. I'm going to drag this right over onto my base color here. And that's going to throw this texture into my projection. So if you hit S, you're going to see here's all the stencil projection properties, ways to maneuver that you can do. Uh, so if I hold down S and then right click, it'll make it bigger or smaller. And then S and left click. And you can hold down shift if you want to snap it to uh, side to side, but we're just going to go ahead and make this a little smaller here. I'm going to move this behind here and we'll just go ahead and paint this warning label here. So I'm going to go ahead and control right click up and then down. And I'm just going to really quickly paint this warning label right onto my mesh. Now if I go one, go back into brush mode here, I can hold down control, right click, and we're going to hit two. That's going to go into eraser mode. And now what I can do is just erase out these pieces that I don't want. And just like any other brush, I can click, hold down shift, and that I can get rid of really quickly all of these areas here. Now you're going to see as I move this around, the roughness of these other layers are showing through. And that's because this warning label here, as we were painting it on, we didn't give it any roughness or height information. I can go ahead and paint that on if I want to. I can go back down here and we can change this just to roughness. I'm sorry. Uh, go back to our hit one to go back to our brush mode here. And now instead of color, we're going to type in roughness here. And we'll go ahead and make this, let's make it about a mid-level here. And we'll just go ahead and we'll done shift and then paint this gray color. Now, if I hit the C key, you're gonna see it's gonna cycle through our different channels here, and here's our roughness channel. Let's go ahead and just fill in this area really quickly with roughness. Now, you might have noticed when we were painting this on, we turned off everything but color, the warning label itself. What you could have done is bring in another texture that would paint roughness at the same time. That's just another way around this, but we were a little, I was a little bit lazy. So now what we can do, and now that I'm cycling through these channels here, I'm like, why is this uh, lit up a little bit more? Our decal is inheriting metallic properties. So just really quickly here, let's hit M, go back to our warning label. We'll turn on metallic and we'll make this completely non-metallic. And then when you hit C to go back to our metallic channel, we can just paint all of this black because underneath our warning label, this is all dielectric. So now when you hit M, there we go. Our warning labels just kind of stuck on there. Now you can go back here to base color and you can dial this base color down if you want to just kind of fade it out a little bit. And just like we did before, you can right click, go add a black mask. And in this case, you know what? Let's add a white mask and that will show uh, the warning label completely. And then you can go back in manually under brushes and then you can take your sandpaper, or your scratches brush, and then you can just kind of scratch this up a little bit or even your dirt brush a little bit drop that down and now you can just kind of chew up some of these edges make it look a little bit more worn and there you go 
And there's a lot more stuff you can do in Painter. There's particle brushes. Uh, let's go ahead and switch our camera back here to uh, perspective view here. And we'll go ahead and turn off our, let's go ahead and turn off symmetry here. Um, you can go down here. We've already turned on shadows, but if you want, you can go to display settings. You can activate post effects. You can turn on anti-aliasing. You do tone mapping. You do color correction. If you want to go in here and say, change your contrast, bump that up a little bit. Go over here to your viewer settings. We have uh, shadows turned on. You can change the shadow opacity if you want to. You can turn on your wireframe. You can change your environment map. And if you want to see your environment map, just crank, crank that environment opacity up all the way. And now if you hold down shift, you can see this is how your object is lighting. If you want to get rid of that environment blur, you can turn the blur down. And now you can see how your object is fitting in lighting within that lighting environment. So again, if we change this lighting environment over here, you can see now our object is lighting like this. And you can also go in here to the built-in iRay render. You can just click this little camera button here. That'll switch you over to the iRay render. And in order to make these changes, you can hold down Shift and then right-click and move your environment map around. Uh, but over here under the dome setting is where you're going to find most of this. And under the viewer settings here, we'll switch this over to Corsica Beach. And if you don't want to see this, open your dome, choose clear color, drop that color down a little bit. And we'll hold down Shift and just rotate that environment around. There we go. So now our object is lighting from this side. And then we can take this y direction we can move that ground up just a bit so that the gun is sitting directly on the ground if you want to you can change this reflectivity to white the glossiness all the way up and now we've got like a mirror image of our object and of course you can dial this down if you want to make it uh, a little more scattered or a little less reflective you can dial those settings in as well and if you control middle mouse click that'll set your field of view and then you can change the aperture so now what it'll do is start or bring your object into focus again control middle mouse click to bring into focus where you clicked and then it'll fade out from here depending on your aperture uh, what you're dialing in so if you just dial it in a little bit you'll see a very subtle uh, sharp to blurry transition of course if you hold down control and click back here it'll be sharp back here and then blurry as it moves away so you can use this to kind of give a little bit of dramatic effect to your render as well and as you're letting as you're letting it sit here and render in what you can also do is go up here to the min samples and max samples you can crank those up and the max time as well and probably the min samples you don't need to worry about but the max samples and max time just crank that up and then it'll sit there and render for a long time uh, and get you the best result you can override the viewport resolution right now it's rendering at 1600 by 997 if you want to render it to like 1920 by 1080 just hit this override viewport resolution and dial that in and then once this is done rendering just hit save render and then save that out as an image file. And like I said before, there's a lot more substance stuff you can do. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Go to my YouTube channel, the link's in the description. You can go to my playlists, and there's a lot of playlist videos in here where we deal with Substance Painter, Substance Designer, Texturing, Instalod, ZBrush Modeling, Maya Modeling, Marvelous Designer, all sorts of fun stuff. One thing I forgot to mention is go up here to File, Export textures, and now you can either export these textures using a configuration or go to your own configuration or go to configuration and make your own. Again, go to my YouTube channel. I'll have more info on that. But for now, we're going to go here to export. We're going to scroll down here until we see PBR Metal Rough. We're going to go over here. We'll change it from PNG to Targa. We'll go ahead and keep the 2048 document size that we have. I'm going to change where this goes. Let's say new folder. Call it export textures. Hit select folder and then hit export. And that'll go ahead and export into that folder. If you hit click open folder here. You're going to see there's our image, images that were baked out.